Hey guys, welcome to the Data Tech channel. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In this channel, we talk about the modern data technologies and do hands-on practice with them. This is a video series on Apache Spark, where we're going to learn all concepts of Spark using PySpark, which is basically a Python library of it. So without further ado, let's start. In this video, we're going to learn how to work with Spark and the second is how to run a job of it. So to work with Spark, we need a cluster. Hence, we're going to use Google Data Proc for it. So why? you will be wondering why we're not downloading the Spark to our local machine or why we're not using some virtual machine and doing stuff there. So we're not doing it this for two main reasons. One, we want to learn how to use Apache Spark instead of the admin part or maintenance of it. In real world, there are infrastructure, ecosystem, and admin teams handle it, not the users. And second, we want to be future ready. As we all know, the cloud is the emerging technology, so we want to understand how Spark works on cloud. So let's go to GCP. So before we go there, a disclaimer is that uh, the Google is uh, the, the Google services are chargeable, but Google is very generous with us, as we all know. They gave us three hundred dollar USD credit on first sign up, so I I will highly recommend to use it. And so let's go there. Okay. After you log in into your GCP console, search for the data proc. And after searching, click on the data proc. It will take a couple of seconds and then you will see a window where you can create a cluster. And it's that simple. So I've already created a cluster, but we will see how to create a new cluster. So you click on create cluster button. It will open another window. There you name the, your cluster. So I'm giving it data demo two. Uh, then you have to pick the location. So it's based on where where you are. So I'm as I'm in the uh, like North America Eastern zone. So I'm picking that location. And you can pick according to yourself. And the next thing we need to pick is the cluster type. So there we can see there are like three cluster type. One is a standard, single node, high availability. So Based on your requirements, you can pick whatever you want. But for this demo, we're going to use, I recommend use standard or single node. Uh, single node, if you are dealing with like very, really small data, but my recommendation is go for standard because there you will get to work with like multiple uh, node, multi-node cluster and which help you to understand things better then we don't have to do anything in auto scaling not nothing in versioning and now here click on change so now you can see there like there are multiple variations of spark with hadoop is available in google data proc so you can pick like they have the latest one too like you can see spark 3.1 hadoop 3.2 which is released like last month not last month, sorry. It was released in March. You can pick whatever you want. I'm going to pick this one where like we're going to use Spark 2.4 and Hadoop 2.1 with CentOS, with CentOS operating system. Select. And then the next thing you need to do, we need to enable the component gateways. So by doing this, we will be able to run our jobs like we will be able to open the web interface and which is always good to see how your jobs are working and like it's interacting like it, by that way like you're able to run your Jupyter notebooks and all those on the web and here is the list of components which we can add to our cluster so I'm going to add Jupyter notebook that's it nothing else but if feel free to add any other thing which you want 
So it says like a Jupyter Notebook required Anaconda if image version is not 2.0. And if you remember, I not picked the 2.0, I picked less than two. So we need the Anaconda 2. And after that, we just need to click on create. <clears throat> it will take um, about a minute to provision. In the meantime, we'll go to the the cluster which we already have so whenever and i want to tell you one more thing before like i click and show you how the cluster whenever you're provisioning a cluster it will come with that automatic storage system the bucket system so which we're going to use uh, like to upload our files run our saver uh, our code and all those things if you want you can like create a a storage outside this cluster and you can use that too but as we are just do, do, doing the demo so I'd recommend like if you're you're not running anything heavy or you just your purpose is to learn use the same storage which comes with the cluster okay in the meantime this like let's go to the old cluster which I already provision okay once your cluster is created your window will look like this so from here we can monitor job like we, we can see all those things so the first thing I'll tell you like uh, go to the VM instance and it will show you how many nodes you have in your cluster so we can see we have like three nodes one is the master node and other two are the worker nodes and we can SSH into our SSH into our master node okay for that just click here and it will open in a new window so by this you you uh, log in into your your SSHing into your master node and from there you can run like you can start your uh, your shell submit your sparks like submit your spark jobs and all those kind of things okay so now we are in our master node I want to first show you the spark shell so just type by spark and as soon as you type like it will this will start the shell uh, this is our shell let me go and show you go back here go to web interface click on web interface and from here you can go to multiple web web interface now we'll look at the Jupyter if you click on this you will land into the Jupyter uh, in the Jupyter in your web notebook and here you can come and run uh, like Jupyter is not part of the cluster so if you want to run a like, cluster for Jupyter notebooks too you can run that too like when you spin up your cluster you will see this is like there is like there will be no engines and the start button is there so you can put whatever you want and start start it and we'll click on GCP so these are the files we're going to work in the like in upcoming videos but this is a place where you can load it but uh, once so the easy way is you click on upload and you upload your files here that's one way or you can go there go to your cluster and let's show you the and the, you can see the new one is also running but you click on your storage <clears throat> and here like you see all these points so go into notebooks Jupyter and these are the same files which you show which you seeing here is the same files so whatever you you can upload it from here or you can upload it from here and this is for demo purposes like in general you will be connecting to the data sources but um, here we are uploading and using we're going to use them so I showed you the shell okay yeah so here you go you you see that your shell is ready so we have seen how to start a shell like we go to the 
VMs and just SSH and for the Jupyter Notebook it's very simple go to the web interface and click on that and this third thing like how to access the storage or upload stuff now uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, Spark Summit so you can like summit your job uh, directly like on your uh, on, on, on your virtual machine or there is another way like if I go to my github so we can like run this kind of command which is basically <clears throat> going to summit our job to this uh, data proc cluster so here you need to tell like where is your 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 PySpark job what's your cluster name and in what reason and you should be good but you will be wondering where are we going to run this this doesn't seems like a so for that you just need to click here it will open the active shell so you copy paste this thing here and you should be good and don't worry about that like we're going to do that in next video but in this video I'm just telling you what's like how to like uh, how to connect like how to go to a shell notebook or if you want to submit a job what's the process for that and where is the storage now okay now we have covered all these things so like we covered how now we have deployed a cluster we looked at the spark cell summit notebook even storage now look at the uh, what's the best practice of, of writing in spark application program structure so when I say it's a best practice like uh, in industry like a lot of people do that and a lot of people don't do that like they have their own ways but I personally like it so that's why I'm sharing and I'm going to share the link of the uh, github so don't worry about it it's going to be in the description so it's very simple easy but it's very helpful for others even like if other people are seeing your code they will understand so the first thing I say for any program structure is let me click on edit so for any program structure I always say start with this like what's the description who's the author and like you can add date and all that kind of like a bit information so if somebody is reading the program for the first time they should understand like what is what it is about the second good practice don't forget to put comments like that's always help even you like sometimes what happens you code something or you program something and you come back and you will be like why i did this but if you code it like it it's uh, it it uh, it helps you and stop wasting time or like um, um like going into and digging again why you did this and then always start with like importing jobs that should be the first thing and then define your functions and always like start your spark session in the main here like that will be the so this is the entry point of your uh, like this code but this is the entry point of your spark uh, job so if you look at like it's very simple like a description at the end comments like start with the import jobs like function like global things and functions and then like whatever here uh, like your application name and all those kind of things you put it in your main it's very basic so at this point you will be wondering like this guy is talking about spark function and context a lot what what exactly it is so spark function is uh, basically the entry point of your application and in earlier earlier version of spark which we saw in our like previous video too it was uh, spark context but from spark 2.0 it is uh, like even spark context is wrapped within the spark session and we start our application like we always include spark session in it and it's also encapsulate like sql high context those kind of things so we don't have to worry about any uh, other context to bring into our session like in to bring into import into our 
program. So before uh, Spark 2.0, you have to bring like every library individual, like all the libraries independently or individually. But with the Spark session, everything is uh, wrapped in it. So you just bring Spark session, everything comes with it. Like for example, SQL, Hive, Spark context and all those things. Uh, now let's go back to the slide. Okay. Um, so next thing is like how we run the Spark application. Let's say you have a code, how you run it. So there are like two simple ways to do it. One is running through the Spark shell and this, the second is to submitting through the Spark summit. In Spark shell, let's, let's first go to the Spark shell. Okay. Uh, you remember we opened the Spark shell. Uh, this is our Spark shell. So in Spark shell, the first thing we need to notice, like a Spark session is already available. You don't have to do anything. And after that, you just write your code. So that's how Spark session works. And for, for submitting your job to the cluster using Spark Summit, we that, like for that we need to create a spark session so if you go here like for example in spark shell you can literally uh, start using the spark function directly because spark session like if you look at the spark session is already available so you can like <clears throat> we will see in the future like how to query stuff and all those things you can directly use spark there but when you are writing a program you have to like define it. For example, if you look at this, you need to define it. Okay, let me sh let me let me quickly show you what that means. Okay, let's break this. Uh, no, not this one. Let's go to other one. Okay, so let's pick this one. If we go to shell and we write this, it will work. We will, we would, we will not get any error. Okay. But if we try to run this directly through the, let's say, go to the note, go to a notebook. You will get an error, like uh, Spark is not defined. So same thing happened. So for Spark Summit, we need to define it, but for Shell, it comes automatically. Uh, that's all for this uh, video. Uh, there will be uh, there will be more videos coming where we showing like like um, how to do all these things in more detail. And uh, thanks for watching it. Be safe. Have a good.